Good morning. Today is Wednesday, January 27th, and this is my video for the week. I hope everyone has had a, a safe and productive uh, past week. Uh, there are three things I want to talk about today on this video, and the first one is snow days. Of course, yesterday we had our first snow day and so forth, and I, a lot of times people ask me, well, how do you make a decision on this? Well, first of all, I want you to know the number one priority in calling snow day is safety. Safety for students, safety for staff, and uh, at five o'clock in the morning is when I want to make that decision so that I can give parents and others a chance to plan uh, for the day. Uh, I ask people from the transportation department to go out on the roads and drive them around 4 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock, and uh, let me know how the roads are. And uh, the report I got received back around quarter to five was the visibility was terrible. Now, there wasn't a lot of snow on the ground, but the visibility was terrible with the snow. Uh, and so therefore, uh, I'm not going to mess around with that. And I knew from the weather forecast that it was going to continue s snow throughout the morning. And in fact, it did. And so this was the right call. And uh, so I'm glad that we were able to keep people safe. But that's the process we use. And the important thing is I want you to know what decision is going to be made uh, regarding the snow day uh, prior to 5.15, 5.30, so you have time to plan. Uh, the next issue that I want to talk about is teaching and learning modality. As you know, since returning from the holiday break, uh, that we have been in a two-system plan uh, for de developmental kindergarten through fifth grade. It's been students in person with their teachers and cohorted and quite frankly it's been working really well and yes we've had some students that have had to classes actually that have had to be uh, placed into a quarantine uh, system only because somebody positive uh, was in the classroom and caused the others to be close contacts and to be uh, sequestered for 10 days uh, with the grade 6 through 12 since the first part of January, we have been in a hybrid model, and that has worked very well also. Uh, the numbers of uh, students being quarantined because of close contact has significantly dropped, and, and that's it's just worked well. Uh, so what have we done in during this four-week period as we evaluated both the K-5 in-person system and the 6 through 12 uh, hybrid model. Uh, as you know, we are daily asking students and staff uh, to be very careful about how they feel in the morning before they come to school or come to work, and that if they aren't feeling well, we ask them to stay at home. And for the most part, uh, our staff has been following that, and so have our students, and that has kept the close contact and the potential for a positive identification of COVID down significantly. Uh, we have also learned that our positive cases have dropped, of course, because of that, and, and that's really important. Uh, what is, has been a concern is not number of cases of COVID in the schools with students and staff. It has been the Kent County's report of positive community cases. And for a while in the month of January, there were over a hundred community people who were identified as positive cases, a hundred over the county average. And that was certainly a concern. In fact, we at one time, the Rockford community was ranked number two in the county as far as positive COVID cases. And so we certainly studied that issue. And just last Friday, that number was only three cases in Rockford area above the county average. So that was significant improvement. And <clears throat> I was very pleased with that. And that gave us more hope that we could move from the hybrid model to an in-person model. All right, another very positive development is that we were very aggressive uh, 
when the Kent County Health Department identified and announced that they were going to provide a vaccine for people who work for school districts. And so immediately we started contacting the ISD, or excuse me, the Kent County Health Department, as well as uh, our employees and saying, you need to schedule yourselves for the first dose of the COVID vaccine. And our employees did. And in fact, we were way ahead of the curve when compared to other school districts in getting our employees uh, scheduled. For example, right now we have over 430 staff members who are either received the, the vaccine or are scheduled to receive the vaccine. We have another 100 that in fact are waiting to be scheduled and will be scheduled. And any other employee other than those numbers I just gave you who choose to uh, be to receive the vaccine will have that opportunity to do so. And so once they receive the vaccine, they'll be scheduled immediately for a, uh, the second dose of the vaccine as well at a certain date, either three or four weeks uh, after the first. And so I, I really want to congratulate not only our employees for being very proactive, but also I want to congratulate the Kent County Health Department for an outstanding job that they have done and making sure that people who want the vaccine will be able to receive the vaccine. And by the way, even I have received the vaccine uh, last Friday, and I'll be scheduled for the second dose uh, in the middle of February. And it didn't hurt at all. In fact, it was a great experience, quite frankly. So we, we know that the most effective way of teaching and learning is face-to-face. The hybrid model certainly worked, but the most important way for students to learn, without a doubt, is students with teachers in the classroom. And so, since August, we have done a lot of things, since last August when school started, to be preventive and proactive in keeping staff and students safe. For example, we've cohorted the elementary schools and students and teachers. We have put into a response that uh, we have developed a COVID response team. There are 15 trained parapros with another nine to back those 15 up. We're the only district in Kent County that have these trained parapros that work directly with our district nurse, Kelly Theaker, and our director of uh, safety, uh, who is Scott Beckman, in fact, to work with these 15 COVID parapros to monitor and to assist and help staff and students dealing with potential COVID issues. And we're very proud of, of that program and what we put in place. In addition to that, we of course have followed universal COVID uh, excuse me, universal masking for all students and employees, our people who visit our schools. Uh, we are continuing to daily screen our staff and we ask our students and parents to do the same. Uh, we have uh, a strong wellness reporting program for people involved with the school district. Uh, our athletic program and administration of the postseason uh, competition, whether it be with swim and dive for girls or the boys football team, has just done an outstanding job. I mean, we've had little incidences of any type of either close contacting or positive cases reported. And they've just done it, our coaches and our athletic directors have just done an outstanding job working with students and parents to make sure that everybody in our postseason tournaments have remained safe. And it's a model, quite frankly, uh, throughout uh, at least to be reported to our governor and our uh, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. So, and then finally, I guess I, I do want you to know that we've had weekly meetings uh, since last fall with, our, with the Kent County Health Department so that we've been able to have direct co communication with them 
on what we're doing and how to improve what we're doing, and it's worked well. So on Monday, February 1st, we will be in person with teachers and students K through 12. K-5 will continue as they have in the past. 612 will move from hybrid to in-person uh, beginning Monday, February 1st. And we're excited about that opportunity because quite frankly, as I said before, that's the most important way, our method, modality in teaching and learning. But I promise you we'll also monitor this in-person instructional initiative and if we find that the numbers of positive cases and or close contacts can, would spike or continue to spike as they did last December, uh, we will move to a hybrid model again. I'm not sure we're going to be moving to any type of remote learning uh, as we have in the past, but we do have a fallback for safety reasons if we have to move from the in-person teaching and learning beginning Monday, February 1st to uh, a hybrid model. We'll do so based upon data, based upon numbers. And of course our Rockford Virtual Program, which has over 960 students attending that program, will continue and so forth as well for those students and parents who choose to be in a remote online learning program. And finally, I want to just say a couple words about uh, the winter sports program. Uh, we have been told by the governor now, and specifically by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, that there will be delay in competition, specifically for contact sports. Basketball, for example, hockey, wrestling, and so forth. And we're disappointed. Uh, because we believe that the protocols have been put in place following the post-secondary, uh, or the, specifically the post-season uh, tournaments. And we've been very successful across the state in managing those tournaments and keeping people safe. Right now, uh, we have been told we have to delay the competition for three weeks. Uh, the Kent County superintendents have all signed a letter that is being sent today to our governor and the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services asking that they reconsider the delay of competition. I know that the Michigan, uh, Michigan High School Athletic Association with Mark Yule as the executive director is also fighting hard uh, encouraging our government officials to reconsider. I encourage parents who have student athletes participating in winter sports, particularly the uh, contact sports, that they collectively come together, not only in Rockford, but across the OK Conference and across the state and work with other parents to in fact encourage the governor and the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services to consider retracting the three-week delay of contact sports. Uh, your voices need to be heard. You have our support. We'll continue to do what we can to lobby uh, our government officials to encourage that our students can begin contact sports sooner than later. I know this has been a long video. Uh, a lot of things we had to talk about. Uh, please take the time to review everything that I've presented today. Uh, I hope you have a, a great week. Stay safe, and I will be talking to you next Wednesday. Thank you.